Welcome to our study today on the Gospel of Mark. We are at the end of Mark chapter 4. Jesus has been teaching by parables, and now there is a stilling of the storm that Jesus does here with his disciples on the Sea of Galilee in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And I want us to take a day, a couple of days actually, to look uh, at this passage and to see what it has to say to us as believers today. Uh, not only do the disciples learn an important lesson as they go into this particular uh, storm, but also we can learn a number of lessons from it as well. So as we come into Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, we see that Jesus stills the storm uh, for his disciples. I want to uh, read that passage for you today, and then we're going to look at verses 35 through 38 and see just how awesome this storm was. And then tomorrow we will look at the awesome calm that God brings uh, in the midst of that storm for his disciples. So in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, we find these words. It says, In the same day, that is the same day that Jesus had been teaching all of these parables, in the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent the, away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And then look at what it says in Mark 5, verse 1, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gagarines. So as we come into this passage, we find the disciples and Jesus in an awful storm. There is a, some would call it a strange proposal in verse 35 when Jesus says, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And the reason why some people would consider this a strange proposal by the Lord is because Jesus is God, and because he is God, he knows all things. In other words, what I'm saying to you, friends, is that Jesus knew that his disciples and that he were going to face this storm. He knew that the storm was coming. So we would say, well, if Jesus knows that the storm is coming, why would he say to his disciples, get in the boat and let's go to the other side? Why would Jesus propose crossing the Sea of Galilee knowing that this storm was coming? Well, you see, Jesus wanted them to see that Christians must face the storms of life. Yes, he knew that a storm was coming, but Jesus wanted to teach them a very valuable lesson or two about storms. There were some things in the midst of this storm that Jesus wanted his disciples to learn. You see, all through Mark chapter 4, Jesus had been teaching his disciples the Word of God. He had been teaching them through parables, and the Word of God and hearing the Word of God produces faith. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, now then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So as we hear the Word of God, whether it's proclaimed to us through preaching, or whether we're involved in reading the Word of God, as we immerse ourselves in the Word of God, it produces faith in our lives. And now, Jesus wants to test that faith that's been developing in their lives. Their faith is going to be tested as they go into this storm. Now, one thing I want you to be reminded of here is a simple truth. You know, Jonah was in a storm because of disobedience. He had disobeyed God, and as a result of that, he found himself in a storm. These servants, or these disciples rather, had obeyed God. Jesus had said to them, get in the boat, and we're going to the other side. And by the way, Mark 5, 1 tells us that they got to the other side. But he says to them, get in the boat, we're going to the other side. They get in the boat to go over to the other side. So what we find here is this, the disciples are in the middle of a storm, but they are there because of obedience. They have been in obeying the Lord, 
And in the midst of their obedience, they find themselves in a storm. Friends, we can't always assume when somebody faces a storm in their life that it's because of disobedience. Sometimes we are in the middle of a storm in the middle of God's perfect will. And as we come into this storm here, we see that really they had no reason to fear. Let me give you a few reasons why these disciples had no reason to fear. First of all, they had no reason to fear because Jesus had said to them in verse 35, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Mark chapter 5 and verse 1 says that they got to the other side. Jesus had promised them that they were going to the other side. Jesus said that they would go to the other side. Jesus had promised them a safe passage. He did not promise them a smooth passage, but he did promise them a safe port on the other side. And friends, we need to understand that God has promised he's going to be with us through life. He has not promised us smooth sailing as we go. Also, we should understand that they had no reason to fear because Jesus himself was with them and they had seen the miracle working power of the Lord many times before as Jesus worked in the midst of these disciples' lives. So they had seen Jesus' miracle working power and they should have understood as they saw Jesus' miracle working power that they had no reason to fear and that they knew that Jesus was there with them and that he was going to lead them safely through. So they had seen the miracle working of their power of the Lord, but also they had no reason to fear because Jesus himself had gone to sleep revealing that there was nothing to be afraid of. You see, as I thought about Jesus being asleep in the boat here, it wasn't complacency and lack of care that Jesus had for his disciples that enabled him to go to sleep. It was that he was teaching them that we can trust God, that we can lean upon him, and that we can rely upon his promises. The psalmist said in Psalm chapter 4 and in verse 8, he says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, O Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. So there we see that the writer of the psalmist says, I can lay down and sleep, and I can lay down in peace and sleep, even in the midst of the storms, because Lord, it is you and, in you, and you alone that enables us to lay down in sleep and in, and, and in peace and in safety. Now, I want you to understand today that these are not land lovers that are scared by this storm on the water. Some of these disciples were experienced sailors. They were experienced fishermen, and they were afraid. Friends, this happens in our life when we get to the place that we walk by sight and not by faith. God has called us to walk by faith as believers. The Bible says, as ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Friends, we've received him by faith. God has called us to live by faith and to walk by faith. And when we walk by sight rather than by faith, we become fearful when these storms come our way. The thing that we learn from this passage is this. God does not exempt his children from the storms of life. There are some who would say, well, if you accept Jesus, everything is wonderful and everything is rosy and everything is perfect. Friends, that's not the case. God does not exempt us from the storms of life. But what it does do when we know the Lord Jesus Christ is we our personal Savior. We have somebody there with us in the midst of the storm. We have somebody that walks with us. We have somebody that strengthens us. We have somebody that carries us when we cannot carry ourselves. And Peter said to the Christians that he was writing to in 1 Peter 4 and in verse 12, he says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. We should not think it strange when trials and difficulties and testing and suffering comes our way. But then also we need to remember this. We should make sure that we have the Lord with us when the storms hit. The psalmist said in Psalm 23 and in verse 4, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Friends, the psalmist there reminds us of the truth that yes, we go through valleys, but we have no reason to fear when the Lord is there with us, that he will sustain us, that he will carry us, that he will comfort us. 
Twice in Isaiah chapter 46, we are reminded of these words. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Oh, friends, what a blessing it is to know that the Lord of hosts is with us and that the God of Jacob is our refuge. Isaiah said in Isaiah 43, 2, When thou walkest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire... Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Oh, friends, let me encourage you and remind you when you walk through the valleys of affliction, be reminded of the fact that you are not going alone, that he is there with you, and that he will sustain you. Last of all, this, today let me read this verse for you. It's in Psalm 27, verse 1, where it says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Friends, there will be times when we will go through the difficulties of life. They will test our faith. They will test our walk with God and how strong our faith is in Him. But friends, we do not need to fear. We, we need to be reminded we are not exempt from the valleys of life, and we need to be reminded of the simple truth that when the storms hit, we need to make sure that we stay close to the shepherd and that the Lord is there with us and that he is sustaining us and that we're in those storms because of obedience to him, not because of disobedience. And if it's because of disobedience, let's be quick to do what we can do to acknowledge our sin and uh, to seek the help of the Lord, his forgiveness, to go to that place of repentance and make things right with the Lord. Have a great day. Tomorrow we're going to look at the awesome calm that Jesus brings in the midst of the storm.